Project Patty. <laughs> Thanks. And when I wanted to erupt, I attached the wire to the battery. Whoa! Oh, hey. Hey. All right. That's great. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Shoemaker better give you an A for this one. At least. <laughs> oh no! I have history next. Maybe I'll sit in the front and make him pick up interest. <laughs> I didn't flinch. Which what you call my sister? I'll handle this. You didn't mean that, right? Didn't I, moron? I spent three weeks making this. It's due tomorrow. Tough twerp. Don't leave it in the middle of the floor. Take your medicine, Woody. Ah! <laughs> in my office. <laughs> now! <laughs> How would you like to have him prepared, Captain? Well, when I was a poor kid back in Hoboken and we had clam bakes, the whole secret was in finding the right garbage to cook them in. Garbage, Gov? Yeah, you know, orange rind, seaweed, peach pits, banana peels, whatever was on the beach. But I think these babies are a little too classy for that. Tell you what, call Maxime's in Paris, ask for Chef Jean-Claude, ask him for his recipe for lobster belle parisienne. How about the champagne? In the fridge, Gov. Is this the best we've got? It's good, Gov. Well, I don't know if it's good enough. This has got to be a dinner George Brundage will never forget. Oh, he'll come through, Gov. I mean, a children's hospital is such a worthy cause. Oh, just in case, I think we should get better champagne. When you ask a man for $100,000, you either got to give him a good meal or a good phone number. And you know me, Clapper, I am not too generous with my phone numbers. I'm so hungry. I <laughs> Look out! I found it's very dangerous to stand between a refrigerator and teenagers. <laughs> That'll go today, girls. Mmm, great. Terrific. Couldn't be better. And who are you? Couldn't be worse. What happened to you? Here, sign this. What is it? Nothing. Just sign it. Clapper and I have to go pick out some champagne. We'll talk about this later. Hey, kid, you shouldn't talk to strangers. There's a lot of bad people out there. Are you a bad person? Hand me that balloon.
Not got a bad person do that. Yeah, why not? You're right. Nick trains you pretty well. You know Nick? Do I know Nick? Look at these. <laughs> That's Nick. He looks so goofy. Yeah, we were both pretty goofy back then. Well, listen, uh, I'll see you around, kid. Don't you want to see him? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. George Brundage happens to be a captain of industry. I feel flattered that Nick wants us to be there. I look at it as a challenge. That's what I'll do with Klosterman. Challenge her to a duel. Rose, would you go easy on the mayonnaise? It's fattening. What are you worried about? You're so thin. Forget thin. I want to be gaunt. That's what Klosterman's going to be when I get through with her. Gaunt. I also read somewhere that George Brundage can be very mean. Oh, yeah. When it comes to business, he is an animal. That's what I'll be with Klosterman. An animal. Anybody here see my balloons? Who are you? My name's Frankie. He makes animals out of balloons. What are you doing here? He knows Nick. Show me your pictures. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Were you his best friend? Well, you'll have to ask him. Is he around? No, he's shopping. What's that, tuna fish? We're having a snack. You want to eat tuna fish when you can have lobster? It's not even a contest. Especially lobster a la beach bum. You ever had that? Lobster a la beach bum? No. You see, you dig a hole in the sand. Then you make a fire. Then you drop it in, and you cover it with orange rinds, banana peels, peach pits, whatever's on the beach. Come on, I'll show you. Are you gonna eat garbage? So then Nick takes the guy and he throws him right out the window. Oh. <laughs> Another time, Nick and me, we sneak in a baggage compartment, figuring we'll hop off after a few miles. Uh huh. We fall asleep. The next thing I know, we wake up, we're in Cleveland. Cleveland? Oh, no. I say, Nick, we're in Cleveland. <laughs> this is great. Let's get a pizza. <laughs> You must have been really great friends. Yeah, we sure were. That must be Nick. Let's go and surprise him. Yeah, surprise him. Yeah? Yeah, hurry up before I get this. Thanks for lobster. I want you to enjoy oh, it. Oh, we Oh, you better check the water in the lobster tank. Right, Jack. Close your eyes. I've got a surprise for you. Go ahead, close them. Surprise? Great. I love surprises. Okay. Wait a minute. Where are you taking me? <laughs> What are you, you walking me into the pool? <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. Open them. It's Frankie, your old friend. He's not my old friend. Huh? He's my brother. Your brother? You're his brother? Yeah. He's my brother. Oh, this is so great! I, I gotta go tell the girls. Long time. Eight years. Planning on staying? Did I say anything about staying? You're not staying? You want me to leave? Did I say anything about leaving? Well, I don't want to stay if you don't want me to stay. Well, I don't want you to stay if you don't want to stay. Well, then why don't I leave? Why don't you grow up? How'd you like to lose about four of your teeth? How'd you like to have mush where your nose used to be? <laughs> Nick, you should have told us you had a brother. This is great. A family reunion. <laughs> Uncle Frankie. I've got an Uncle Frankie. <laughs> Look, why don't you girls go wash up and get ready for dinner? We already had dinner. Yeah, we had a clam bake. Clam bake? 
Uncle Frankie cooked it, you know, like he used to at the beach in a hole. In a hole? Only we didn't have clams. We have lobsters. Lobsters. All a beach bum, you know, with garbage and stuff. They were delicious. Come on, have some before they get cold. Oh, yeah, yes, come on. Oh, oh, you guys. Guys. Oh, You dug a hole in my lawn for a clam bake? Big deal. What, are you running out of lawn? You got a football field for a yard. And you got a ping pong ball for a brain. That's it. I'm blowing his dump. Don't write. There they are. Oh, oh, come on. Look. Hold it right there. I want to get a picture of you two. OK, now put your arm around each other's shoulders. OK. Now say cheese. Cheese. Didn't you just love the way Uncle Frankie fixed that lobster? It's terrific. We're gonna go show him his room now. Oh, it's so great having him here. Right. I didn't pick that fight. Doreen Klosterman did. And the next time I see her, I'm gonna deck her. For what crime does she have this decking coming to her? She wrecked my science project. She do it on purpose? No, she's just a moronic, clumsy idiot which is what I told her. So it was an accident? Yeah, for which he didn't apologize. Well, it's hard to get some people to apologize after you've called them a moronic, clumsy idiot. Sit down. Look, Patty, I happen to know a little bit about fights in school. Sometimes I had two or three a day, depending on the weather. But let's face it. This is not South Hoboken, and you don't go to school with kids named Murray the Mauler and Lunatic Louie. She started it. It was a mistake. All right. Say you deck her. Then what happens? She decks you. Then you got to deck her again. Pretty soon, you're the only toothless 13-year-olds in America. I don't get even she'll think I'm gutless. She'll walk all over me. If she gives you trouble, you call the teacher. You want me to be a squealer? Did you ever squeal on Lunatic Louie? No, but does Doreen Klosterman carry a broken bottle in her school bag? No more fights and no more notes. Do you read me? Do you read me? Good. on your note? Yeah. Tell you the cool little classroom. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. I only said I was because I got tired of a lecture. When I was a kid in Hoboken, everybody walked around with torpedoes and machine guns. <laughs> what are you gonna do to Klosterman? I don't know yet. Something. I'd appreciate any suggestions. I suggest you forget about it. Yeah, you put your science project back together, so no big deal. Yeah, no real harm done. You know, you're all a bunch of hypocrites. Diane, if Klosterman did that to you, you wouldn't let her live. And Rose, if you're supposed to be so grown up, how come when Amy Hillerman called you a half-breed, you stapled her braids together? And Marva, no real harm done when Freddie Zwick snuck into the girls' locker room and tried to steal your bra. Do you remember why? Because I jumped him and bit him in the leg, that's why. You don't want to help me? Fine. I'll do it myself. I'll help you, Patty. Okay, Klosterman, you're in big trouble. Yeah, you've messed with the wrong crowd. So watch out, Doreen, because here we come.
ideas here. Yeah, something not too violent, but yet not too tame. Uncle Frankie! Hi, girls. When you and Nick were kids, what did you guys do to get back at somebody? What we did. No, you don't want to do what we did. I mean, Hoboken was a rough place, not like here. I mean, we went to school with guys like Charlie the Crunch, Mary the Mola, Lunatic Louie. And let me tell you, we pulled some pretty wicked stunts. Well, we were thinking something between a stunt and a prank. Well, I can tell you what we did to Stanley Dunderman. Nick and me, we used to make these all the time. Diane, give me a little bottle with the red cap. What is this? Sulfur. Smells ten times worse than rotten eggs. You see, we hid one of these stink bombs under the couch in Stanley Dunderman's living room. His parents were at the roller derby. Stanley had planned on doing some very heavy necking with his girlfriend. Well, a stink bomb goes off right in the middle of the first kiss. <laughs> I can't wait to do this. OK, now you take this. All right, now listen. You don't add the Foley formula until the last second. As soon as you do, boom, you take off. I can't hurt anybody. Just stinks. <laughs> now, we need a plan. Is Doreen Clashman in here? Yeah. What? Telephone. Who is it? Like I'm supposed to know, right? Hey, Doreen. Watch my locker. I got a telephone call. I'll get the door. Hello? Doreen Costuman? Yeah. This is Station KCPY conducting our daily history quiz. Do you wish to play? Well, yeah. Whoever owns a green Epsil, license plate number 702 QRB, better get out there. A truck just crunched it. George Washington was our nation's first president, first plumber, or first pediatrician. That's easy, our first president. Oh, no. Who discovered America? A, Christopher Columbus, B, Marlon Brando, or C, Fats Domino? No, oh, please. <laughs> what are you pulling? <coughs> what are you doing in my locker? We're even now, cluster bed. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> Patty Foley put a stink on in my locker. Patty, in my office. Another note. Just what I need to become pen pals with your principal. I had to get even with Klosterman. You didn't get even, you just escalated the war. What did you do? I put a stink bomb in her locker. A stink bomb? Very intelligent. Now that's gonna look great on your record. A stink bomb? Yeah. With sulfur in it, you add the Foley formula, big clouds of yellow smoke, a Dunderman destroyer. King says 10 jelly beans. That's a good bet. Hi, Uncle Frank is teaching us how to play poker. Wonderful. First it's stink bombs, now it's poker. What's next, armed robbery? Hey, take it easy. Patty was just trying to get even. I didn't want her to get even. I wanted her to drop it. You didn't drop it with Dunderman. 
He told him about Dundeman. So what? My favorite part is when they kissed and boom, that stink bomb goes off. That was so funny. Did he tell you the part that wasn't so funny? When our old man found out about it, he beat the pants off us. Did you tell him that part, Frankie? Hey, look, it's over with Patty and that Klosterman kid. They're all square. You gonna give me a guarantee on that? Coming in here with your charm and your tap dance and getting the girls in trouble? Why don't you start acting your age for a change? Hey, no sweat. I'll be a regular altar boy from now on. I hope so. Because I got important people coming to dinner tonight. Better still, since you like magic tricks so much, I got a good one for you. Make yourself disappear. You got that altar boy? Yeah, I got it, boss. Let's settle it. Lasky Field, right after school Wednesday. You got it. Bring a first aid kit, and you better bring a surgeon. <laughs> Why don't you just ask Brundage for the money? It's a ritual. First you give him a fancy meal, that's some nice conversation, and then you hit him with the pitch. Do we have to stay for the whole thing? Believe me, I know how difficult these things are to sit through, even for me. But I need your help. This guy is a tough cookie, so it's got to be a team effort here, okay? Sure, Nick. You know how important this charity is to you. What do you want us to do? Just be terrific hostesses, and we'll charm the money right out of his pockets. I'll see you downstairs. Okay, you heard what he said. Good hostesses. What's that supposed to mean? It means we have to be extra nice, extra sweet. Come on, practice. Everybody smile. Say hi. Hi. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Good to see you, George. Welcome to California. Hello, Nick. I'd like you to meet three of my girls. This is Marba, Diane, and Rose. Hi. So nice to meet you. And you, of course, must be Mrs. Brundage. Agnes, right? Joni. Agnes left me for a bullfighter. Aha. Uh -huh. Charmed to meet all of you, I'm sure. Hi, so nice to meet you. Well, my man Clapper here has prepared a magnificent meal for you tonight. Right. How was your flight from Boston, Mrs. Brundage? Oh, I was very sick on the plane. Lots of turbulence. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So am I. I know just how you feel. How terrible. And don't even ask about the landing. We bounced down the whole runway and almost hit a catering truck. Sorry to hear that, too. So am I. I know just how you feel. That's even more terrible. So, George. How long are you planning to stay in town? I've got a business meeting in San Francisco tomorrow, and then we fly back to Boston. I hope there's no turbulence this time. Nick, I'm not a man to beat around the bush. You'd like me to contribute a sum of money to that children's hospital. Naturally, you have a prospectus. Of course. Clapper. Hey, you go, George. I think I'm getting a little sick. That's just awful. Poor thing. Well, it's probably still the effects of the plane ride. I just feel so nauseous. Oh. I know what to do. See this thumb? It was all bleeding and yucky. That's Mickey, my youngest. Uncle Frankie cured it. He cures everything. I'll go get him. No, no, Mickey. Nick, I can tell right away. I like it. And when George Brundage likes something, he doesn't fiddle around. Shall we say a hundred thousand to start? We could say that. I understand somebody's sick here. Well, she was, but not anymore. She's much better now. I am not. I got a tummy ache. Oh. And it's uh, such a pretty little tummy too. Mickey, why don't you go back to bed? You know, I know exactly what would fix you up. Once on the island of Pago Pago, I ate some. 
It was dark, but it tasted like oily rubber bands. Now, luckily, the chief of the island was a very close personal friend of mine. So he gave me this ancient remedy. It's an elixir. Now, he mixed this with pineapple juice, and it cured me just like that. I never go anywhere without this. Well, I don't think you want to try a medicine that you've never had before. So why don't you take that elixir what? back to your room? Well, if you cured him just like that. Sure. Give it to her. Sure. Give it to her. What was I doing? The check. Oh, right. Down the hatch. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. George, you should try some. George, I, I don't think you'd like this stuff. Now, about that check. I think what? for myself, Nick. Let me try it. Sure. Interesting. You want some more? Sure. Oh, me too. No, no, no dancing, Johnny. I'm not feeling too well. I, my stomach seems to be bad. Hang up. Look, look uh, George, before you go, about, about that check for my charity? We'll oh, talk about it tomorrow. I'll call you from San Diego. I, I thought you were going to San Francisco, George. I'll call you from there, too. I said I was sorry, Nick. Sorry? You jeopardized my whole children's hospital campaign, and sorry is the best you can do. So I made a mistake. Your whole life has become a mistake. Because you never take responsibility for anything. You're not going to start that stuff about Pop now, are you? Well, it's the truth, isn't it? When he died, Mom went to pieces. You were no help. You left everything for me to do. You didn't want my help. You wanted to run everything yourself. You didn't need me. You didn't need anybody. Maybe I ought to hit the road right now. Maybe I shouldn't have come here in the first place. Why did you come here? Because I wanted to see you. You wanted to see me? What for except to make more trouble? Because I wanted to talk to you. Why? Why now after all these years? Because I'm dying. What? Leukemia. Doc says I got a couple of months at Tops. So I figured that you and I, we could... Ah, eh, what's the difference? Frank. There's something I can do. I mean, look, I'll, I'll get you the best doctors. I've eh, seen the best, Nick. It's a fact. Well, why don't you stay here? I'll, I'll get you round-the-clock care. Look, I'm going out my own way. I'm still going to get my kicks. I'm shipping out to Rio day after tomorrow. You sure, Frankie? My bags are packed. I'm gonna move into a hotel tonight. I already called the cab. You say goodbye to those girls. Let's face it, Nick. You and I, we weren't meant to get along. Frankie, look. Hey, happens to a lot of brothers. No big deal. See you around. See you around. Clapper said you were up all last night. I'm fine. Can a guy get any privacy in his own house? 
What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Now just go away and leave me alone. Nick, tell me what's wrong. He's got leukemia, Rose. My kid brother's dying. I'm so sorry. I came back to see to get patch things up. I let him go without doing it. Where is he now? Hotel Bristol. I'm by the docks. Ship's out tomorrow. Then you still have time. Call him. It's no use. You saw us, Rose. We can't even talk to each other. I saw those pictures when you were kids. You talked back then. Back then it was different. When we were kids, we were inseparable. Frankie and Nick. We were a real team, Rose. Did everything together. You know, if somebody picked a fight with Frankie, you have to answer to me, too, and vice versa. And you know that we were the best pool players in all of Hoboken. Nobody could beat us. Frankie and Nick. I don't know what happened, Rose. You gotta at least try to talk to him. You're so lucky to have a brother. I never had a family. As long as you've got him, you've gotta hold on to him. You can't let it go like this. Call him. Frankie Folatini, please. Hello, Frankie. It's your brother, Nick. What do you say? I was thinking maybe uh, we can get together, you know, before you ship out. What, what do you mean you were going to go to a movie? Hey, look, if a movie is more important than this, then maybe we just better forget... Nick! Look, Frankie, Frankie, I, uh... I really want to see you. I'm in the mood to shoot a little pool. Want to shoot some pool? Thanks for the game, guys. You guys will get us next time. Yeah, you take it easy now. Suckers. Suckers. Here. Use your hand. Not bad. The kids need new shoes. You know what I think? What? I think we better get out of here before those jabonis realize they've been hustled. Let's hit it. Yay! Yes! <laughs> that was a beauty. <laughs> Frank, when you pulled off that three-cushion bank shot with the eight ball right in the corner pocket, it was like a work of art. <laughs> when you pulled the three-ball combination off the 12, forget about it. You made my mouth water. <laughs> just like old times, that huh, kid? Yeah, just like <laughs> old times. You know, when Mom went to pieces after Pop died, I felt I had to take his place, be the strong one. And I was really scared, Frankie. You scared? Out of my mind. I guess maybe I started acting like a know-it-all to cover it. I'm sorry, Frankie. Hey, somebody had to take over. You really saved us, Nicky. Hey, no more used to do after we took some suckers and pool. Sure, we would go out and have a good fight. <laughs> I mean, after that. Well, then we would pick up a couple of lovelies, go eat some clams, and go dancing. So? Nick, I think it's going to be very tough finding a couple of lovelies around here. No need to. Anyway, we can get five of them. <laughs> <laughs> A steamer is more than just a clam. A steamer is a, um, a what? A steamer is an institution. An institution. Mm, unbelievable. Mm. They're great. You know what we need? 
Some music. Oh, play Elvis. No, no, Chuck Berry. Yeah. Alex Little Richard. You hear that, Frankie? These kids think they know good music. Oh, boy, I bet he's going to play Perry Como. No, or worse, <laughs> Bing Crosby. ba 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 bing <laughs> Something mellow, Nikki. Little brother, you got it. Now we're gonna show you what it's all about. Oh, I wonder what this is gonna be. I have no idea. They're gonna walk. Oh, 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 Times we had. Sometimes we're too quick to judge. I do the same myself. At a junction, that's a place to be. And this function, oh, it brings back memories. snooze Cinderella. Aye. My back is killing me. Well, that happens when you sleep on the ground. Mm. Oof. Ah. I got a little dizzy there. Here, here. Let me help you. You know, um, before I came over to see you yesterday, I spoke to this big doctor, and, um, We'd like to check you into a hospital, you know, maybe 
Give you a few treatments Nick, and then... please. Sure, Frankie. Whatever you say. Does anybody else know? Just Rose, but... She's pretty mature. She can handle it. You know, I think you're doing a terrific job with those girls. And they're really lucky to have you. We lost a lot of good years, Frankie. I don't know if I could ever forgive myself for that. Hey, come on. It took two of us. You sure you have to ship out this afternoon? I mean, can't you stay a couple more days? You know me, Nick. I gotta keep moving. But I'd like to go say goodbye to the girls. Sure, Frankie. I expect good grades from all of you. Not from me. Why not? I don't have any tests yet. Isn't that great? <laughs> Come here. Give me a kiss. Mwah. Daddy? You know, Nick and I, we didn't get along for a lot of years. Yeah. I know you had fights. Well, it was more like one long fight. And it was mostly because... Well, we thought things about one another that weren't true. Yesterday, well, we really got a chance to see each other's side. We really talk things out. Now we're great pals again. Got it, Patty? I love you, Frankie. I love you, too. Bye, girls. I love you all. Bye, Uncle Frankie. Bye, Martha. Bye, Peanut. <laughs> Bye, Frankie. Bye, Rosie. Take care, everybody. Including this lunatic next to me. Don't worry, Rosie. Everything's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. the rest of your game. I don't need any help to apologize. What? Look, I thought the whole thing over. The thing with the science project was an accident. I got mad. I do that a lot. So I'm sorry about the names I called you and about the stink bomb. If you still want to take a shot at me, go ahead. That's okay. We'll forget the whole thing. What was in that stink bomb anyway? Oh. We got it all from a chemistry set. My Uncle Frankie showed us to use sulfur. And the Foley formula. But the thing you gotta remember is don't use the formula until you're ready to run. Because if you do, you might get splattered. Okay, you're all checked in. Ship sails in about 20 minutes. Thanks, sir. Welcome aboard. Right on. Well, that's it. Next stop, Rio. Yeah, well, uh, you take it easy now. Yeah. You take it easy, too. I love you, Frankie. I love you too, Nick. Don't let it get to you. I mean, I, I had a great life. I've seen the sun setting on the Himalayas. 
I've been to the headwaters of the Nile. I've held a, a baby tiger cub in my arms, Nick. <laughs> and last night, I had the best time of my life with my brother. You just remember that. I remember that, Frankie. Hey, pal. Do me a favor, would you? Take a picture of me and my brother. Sure. Good. Look, when you get the port, make a print of this and send it to me. I'll tell you what. I'll make six. Do me a favor. Don't ruin this picture for me. I'm gonna ruin this picture with that mug of yours in it. Get out of here. Now, this is a face. Yeah, well, we'll see. All right, here we go. 